getting into my current field, I think goes back a long way in my life. And this is going to definitely sound cliche. Um, when I was very young, I was always interested in space and, and space science. Um, but really, there was a formative moment where my father took me to see a shuttle launch, a, a space shuttle launch, when I was very young. Um, and I really remember that it's kind of stuck with me. And that kind of sparked my love for aerospace and, and, and the space industry. However, um, my sort of general interests have always been science. And then going, going forward, I know I wanted to study um, space, space science at university, which I was lucky enough to do at the University of St. Andrews and get a great education and background. And then I was at a point in my life where I wasn't sure if I wanted to go, um, I, I know this kind of um, doesn't match up exactly with my background, but I, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into maybe a more um, financial area or something else to, to perhaps, you know, stay, stay in the UK or, or kind of cast my net wide. And then um, I ended up finding that I, you know, I really wanted to do the aerospace. So I, I heavily went down that route and um, focused my applications towards the end of my application process um, in that direction. And the, the journey up to that point, I think was, was definitely worth it um, a long time coming. And then getting into my first job out of university, um, you know, that was, that was just applying online and going through the processes um, like most people do. And then because of the coronavirus pandemic, the company that I was working for uh, went bankrupt. So I, I lost my job and back in March of 2020 and um, like so many other people in my company around the world, and I was kind of in a bit of a limbo, but knew that I wanted to get back into the workforce as fast as possible. And I was in a, I was in a position where um, the, the company that, that I was working for was pretty high profile. So when they went bankrupt, it was high profile. Um, and there was a lot of opportunities available to us um, as, as former employees. But interestingly enough, the way that I was able to find my, my current position, um, which is a software engineer. Uh, I, I work as part of the US space program. Uh, I'm a government contractor through CACI and I work at NASA. Um, I, was, I was able to find this job by posting on LinkedIn that I was out of a job. I was looking for open positions. And a, a friend of mine from high school that I hadn't spoken to in a long time reached out to me and said, I have a friend from college who works in Houston and he, he works as part of the space program. And, um, there's some open positions at his company and, uh, you know, do you want me to put you in contact? And I think that's such an interesting process because just having connections with friends or connections with anybody really is, uh, is just a fantastic way to find, find jobs. People are, and I guess this is anecdotal personal experience, but I think, I think it holds true that people are always more willing to help you than you realize. People want to help you. People, people want to feel good that they've helped you. Um, and it can, can even you know, boost their potential um, chance in the future. A lot of companies offer incentives to hire you know, people. Um, so if you recommend somebody at most companies, you often get a, a bonus, um, which is a huge incentive. But I was able to you know, get a recommendation for this job, uh, which, which always helps, right? Getting that, getting that referral from somebody really gets your foot in the door past that initial stage. Um, and my background and my skills lined up very, very closely to what they were looking for in, in the current job that, I, that I'm in now. Um, even though I was only in the labor force for six months, um, I you know, had picked up enough skills and had, had the background to come into this current job. Um, and I've been in it for a year now, which, which has been amazing. But really the, the journey from university into my first job was, you know, I think the, the standard process of setting off applications but really, once I had a foothold in the industry, um, the connections connections were amazing, um, and it was that that process made my life, I think, a lot easier. Um, and I was able to leverage my skills and my experience, uh, having gotten my foot in the door through, you know, um, through a connection to to then find the job. And had I had connections to the industry from university, straight from university going in, I think that would have made my my life a lot easier as well. Um, I mean, luckily I was able to find a fantastic job, but um, I know that's not true for a lot of people. And having having a good 
network, having a good set of connections, um, even tenuous connections is, is incredibly important. And it's something that people have told me throughout my life. My, my dad specifically has always said, hold on to your connections. Um, and I kind of brush it off. And uh, that was so true. And it's something that uh, I try to keep a lot, a lot tighter now and, 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 and stay in contact with people and, and, and have a good network because I can really, really go, go a long way. I, I just, I can't stress enough how important that is. Finding my first job after university was an interesting process. I would say it was a challenging one. Um, coming from a background in science and astrophysics and trying to go into a more engineering field was certainly a, um, certainly a jump, I think. And a jump, especially because I was going from a school in the UK to an industry in the United States. And I went through a process of applying to a lot of different opportunities across a very vast set of fields, uh, eventually kind of narrowing my way down into the aerospace industry, which I, was something that I always wanted to go into, but I got into my head that I had to cast my net quite wide in order to um, sort of find a job for myself right away. Um, I would say that the way that I found my particular first role, which was as a spacecraft controller for a company called OneWeb, um, was really just by scouring the internet and trying to find open positions and um, companies that were developing, but not really huge yet. Um, kind of in the startup phase, but 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 not really at the same time, if, if that makes sense. Um, and I went through the normal application process online uh, and and found you know found their web portal, looked at the the job recommendation or the job lists uh, and, and matched up my skills against the open positions. And when I was looking for positions at the specific company, um, I really tried to match my set of skills to, to those open positions, not really scattershotting, but, but going for the ones that I thought um, I really could, could have the best chance at. Because at this point in my search, I, you know, I, I had gone through, I think 50 plus applications at this point with no luck. So going through and trying to match up my specific skills to that, to that role and that job rec, um, what I think was, was really big. Uh, and then jumping down into the interview process really was able to highlight, highlight my skills and how I could contribute to, to the company in that specific role. Um, now, I, I know that when looking for companies, it can be, it can be difficult to, to get the sense of exactly what the certain positions are gonna give you um, and, and exactly what they're looking for from you. So I, I would say do your research and and really try to try to dig down into that, that role in order to find out what uh, what you can offer offer the company.